Okay, so I'm going to take a few minutes here to go through some of the pictures of my uh, homemade bandsaw mill and just kind of give an overview of some of the components. Um, I'm going to do some, some more videos uh, that are going to go through each component individually and try to give some uh, insight as to, to how it was put together. At the moment I don't have any drawings or plans to go with this so the, um, the best I can do is uh, go, go through the, the photos and the videos and explain, um, try to explain step by step how each component was uh, put together. Okay so overall basically we have the, uh, these are dummy tires off of a, uh, an older Cavalier car and uh, you can see the, the lug nuts, the bolt pattern, they're bolted up there. Um, I have the fr one front wheel bearing and a rear wheel bearing off of the same car and I also got these at a, uh, a salvage yard. I, I think for the uh, for the two wheel bearings, the dr front drive shaft because that's what drives it and the uh, wheels, I got them for around thirty dollars or so. So it wasn't uh, wasn't very expensive and, and definitely the way to go. I've seen a lot of other designs that had um, shafts for each of the, the wheels, but it relied on you had to get a hub made, it had to be machined uh, for the right bolt pattern, um, the bearings had to be lined up. These uh, the bearings are meant for, for those wheels. They're meant for heavy loads, uh, way heavier than what this is going to be, and high speeds as well. So. Um, this was just a, uh, a perfect solution for me and it was an easy an easy one. Uh, the next thing is this is a, uh, a 13 horsepower gas engine. It, as you can see it's just bolted to a uh, plate here and on the back side of this wheel, the drive wheel, there is a, uh, a pulley and the belt from, you can see the belt here going on to this shaft goes down to a larger pulley on the back of this wheel uh, which gets the RPM that we require and the only thing to engage it was this lever here so this lever with another um, idler pulley uh, basically uh, when the engine was running and idling the belt would be uh, basically slipping on this pulley up here so it wouldn't be driving uh, we want to engage it you pull the lever down and it pushes tension onto the belt which obviously causes enough friction to, to turn the wheel Anyways, that uh, that worked very well for me. That uh, that method, it was manual but simple and effective. Um, the other thing is, you can see the bed here is made of angle iron flipped over on its edge. So um, if you're looking at it kind of straight on, it would look like a a V type of thing, an upside down V. Um, which match uh, these wheels are also V groove um, wheels. Uh, the other thing uh, to point out, I guess, would be the this is threaded rod here. So two pieces of threaded rod that come down and attach to this main this main uh, carrier here that goes slides up and down on these posts. This threaded rod has a sprocket at the top, the same size sprocket on each side, and uh, the chain connecting it. This is just a hand crank. So when this one's turned. This one turns at the same same number of revolutions, causing uh, this to go up and down at the proper, uh, at the, you know, straight. Basically, that both sides go up at the same uh, same time. Uh, the only thing I could say, I just used the uh, regular pitch threaded rod. I think three quarter inch threaded rod. I would go with like an Acme thread or something that was more aggressive, uh, just because it took. Um, I think it was, I can't remember exactly, but like around 12 or 15 turns and you would get uh, the next board for most of the, the cutting that I was doing. So it's okay for each board every time you go down index to cut another board, but when you want to go from, uh, you know, all the way down to all the way up, it was a bit of a pain. So either, uh, you know, if you still want the fine adjustment, maybe if you had a... Uh, a, an automated mechanism to drive this instead of the the hand crank. That would be another, I'd say, uh, another added feature, I guess, that could go on. And the other thing to point out, I guess, would be the these uh, bunks that are on here. They're basically just pipe to hold the log up to the height where we need it. But these are 
other pieces of angle iron that are welded to a, a larger pipe than the cross pipe here. So um, that pipe slides over this one and uh, they have on the back side of them, I'll, be, I'll probably be able to show you in another video or another picture here if I can. I'm just going to scroll up on my, my website here where I have these posted. Yeah, you can kind of see here there's a, it, an arrow pointing to that locking bolt. Um, so they have, I have these on both sides of the log and they, they swing up and down and uh, they slide back and forth. Um, it worked well, but again, uh, I probably would come up with maybe a more automated system if I had to do it again just because it took quite a while to, um, you know, get your log positioned and, you know, there's a little bit of readjusting that goes on. So just uh, improvements, I guess, to improve the efficiency of the whole overall machine when you're done. Uh, what else do we have here? I'll just scroll through some pictures. These are more, I won't spend much time on them for the next videos. Uh, this basically, you've got your square stock here, your square uh, metal tube, and there's a larger, the next size up, that's uh, basically what that slides on. So um, no bearings or anything like that. It's just uh, two pieces of metal uh, square tubing that slide over one another and that's what these large pieces of angle iron here for the carrier are welded to is the larger uh, square tube. Um, down here we have the two guides you can see one here one over here and uh, basically that is for um, that one's for keeping the blade uh, kind of going in the direction you want it and to stop it from wandering. Uh, they're both adjustable as well, but again, we'll, I've got more videos of those that, uh, that show the actual detail of them. You can see here's one of the roller bearing guide and the other side is just the, basically the, the piece of brass that has a slot cut in it. So that's on one side, this is on the other side when you kind of look at it up close. Um, here's just a, a picture. You can see uh, there's the larger diameter square tubing and there's the angle iron with the um, uh, welded to the square tubing. You can see here this was um, my attempt at having a cable and a winch system to raise and lower. While in theory it was good, it really didn't worked the way I had intended or as good as I intended for one uh, because these weren't a perfect fit the square tubing and it wasn't on bearings it tended to want to go one side up more than the other um, and also I really didn't have the control that I thought I would um, and precision in, in raising and lowering it so uh, that really didn't make it uh, as you can see there I have my diagram from my website that that didn't make it to the final design it's kind of what the top of it looked like there the system I had geared up uh, there's a few things that I'll talk about in the, the other videos that um, didn't make it to the final design this did make it to the final design this was basically the method for um, adding tension and like uh, loosening the blade and tightening the blade so uh, here we have Basically, these are pieces of uh, angle that slide over the other angle here. And on the bottom of it, <clears throat> it is a plate that goes across. So this is sandwiched in there basically on three sides, so the top side and across the bottom. And the only direction it can go is slide back and forth here. And uh, you don't see it in this picture because it's not in yet, but there's basically uh, holes through this end plate and this end plate and threaded rod goes through there and butts up against this uh, piece of square tubing the one that doesn't uh, have a movement but it stays uh, it stays stationary relative to this piece here so um, you don't need to worry about it needing to slide there uh, and basically had nuts on either side of this which allowed uh, one welded here and I just think it was a hole on this side 
So this nut allowed you to turn the threaded rod and it would move this out this way or loosen it off and it would move it back in that way and that's basically what you had for the tension on your blade. So um, I guess that's it. Um, there you can see it with the cover on and in action on one of my previous videos. Let's see if I can uh, give that a play to see if it will play in your your screen here. Yep, yeah, that was it. So that's pretty much all I have uh, for this video. I'll look forward to going over some of the details in the other videos.